well, this one morning, um, I was getting ready for my normal routine to go out and hold this house open. I put on my, my oversized suit because it was the only suit that I had. And as I was gathering my things to walk out of the front door, all of my electricity turned off. And, you know, I knew why it turned off. It turned off because I didn't pay the bill and I didn't have any money to pay the bill. But nonetheless, I said, I'm going to go and sell this house. There's nothing I can do about that electricity. It's off. So I got in my um, car with about a quarter tank of gas in there, drove across town to sit in this house all day. Again, I was determined to sell it today, you know. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Kingdom REI podcast. This is your host, Ellis Hammond, founder of the Kingdom REI Mastermind and host of this amazing show that brings kingdom leaders in the world of entrepreneurship and real estate who are absolutely crushing it in business. And this show is going to be no different. Um, I got a man here who went from broke as a joke, is what he likes to say, a single agent living that agent life, hustling, grinding his fingers off, um, to really unlocking the secret of influencing people, building teams, adding value to others, uh, all the principles we know of what it takes to be a kingdom leader and is growing the fastest growing real estate team in the entire nation today. Um, he has a YouTube channel that has tens of thousands of subscribers with millions of views, influencing people all over the country. And they look to him for answers for growing their teams or real estate companies. And so I'm bringing him to you today. I'm so pumped to have this guy. We're just getting to know each other. Chase and Miles, what's up, man? Hey, how you doing? That, that was an amazing intro. Oh my gosh. Thank you. You made me sound real good. I love it. <laughs> Bro, I, I'm I'm just want people to be as excited as yes. I am about this show, man, because I got Chase and Miles on the podcast. Let's yes. go. This is awesome. I love it. I'm happy to be here. Man, so um, I know we're just getting to know each other, but this is the Kingdom Mari podcast, man. Our audience are, are amazing people, man. Absolutely doing amazing things in business and life and really trying to incorporate their faith into what they're doing and truly lead. And so that's why I'm pumped to have you here, man, because that's what you're doing. I mean, you're truly leading people all over the country, the nation, um, on your channels and in your business. And so if there's anything I want to get out of you today, man, is, is that switch, right? That switch from going from um, you know, I, I don't know what that was. We're going to find out today, but, but going from a broke single agent to now forming a mindset of building teams and helping people. And so, man, I'm excited to uncover that, but if you don't mind, let me just pray for us. Always ask God to bless this time. We'll get in, man. So God, I thank you. Thank you for Jason. Thank you for his testimony. I, I truly am excited about uh, what we're going to uncover today about Lord, just the faith, the belief that it takes, um, to go from, uh, to, I mean, to really multiply your impact in your leadership. And so, God, thank you for his testimony and what you're doing in his life and what you're doing through his life and pray that today would be an extension um, of that. In Christ's name, amen. Dude, so fastest growing real estate team. Seriously? Yeah, you know, it's... it's is that exhausting? <laughs> it is. It's, it's, it's exhausting in a sense of I'm that type of person. Like I always want to make sure that every single person is taken care of and like every, every need is met. Yeah. And that gets a little exhausting and difficult when you start getting more people than you can, you expect it or can handle. So, you know, I'm, I'm now learning to leverage systems and other people on that aspect and and be okay with it not just being me personally for everything but i'm enjoying the journey really i hear you man so let's talk about that man let's talk about the journey so take us back i don't know you sleep on somebody's couch at some point i'm yeah. sure <laughs> so let's start there and what and just let's talk about these turning points man that that led you from you know to that to i mean you're so to be clear real estate you have, you work you have real estate agency when we talk about real estate team working mm -hmm. for exp um or under exp 
and and that's that's what we mean so let, let's talk about turning points man and, and take us back and walk us through this journey yeah sure um this isn't how my my business started you know it wasn't anywhere near here i was i was in such a difficult place in life and i decided to move all the way across the country so i moved from georgia so i moved from atlanta georgia over to dallas didn't know anybody here in Dallas, didn't like none of that. I just said, I need something new. I need to change. I need to turn my life around. And I got in, I got into real estate, got my real estate license. Once I got here. What led you to Dallas? I mean, why move to Dallas? Georgia's popping. You know, I don't know. <laughs> and my, my plan was like, I mean, I have family down in Houston, but I wasn't trying to move to Houston and my big dreams were either to move to LA or New York, but everybody was telling me I couldn't afford it. And I knew I couldn't afford it. So I said, <laughs> I'm going to move to Dallas for one year, just to plant here for one year. Then I'm moving to either New York or LA. I've been here ever since. And <laughs> here we are like going on nine years later. So, but yeah, Dallas was just supposed to be a little pit stop. I love that, man. All right. So keep going. My bad. I interrupt you, but you was rolling. Yeah, yeah. So um, got into to real estate. I mean, I had goals and dreams. I wanted to make this work. Um, I didn't know anything about real estate. I didn't come from a real estate family background, nothing like that. But everyone, you know, always talk about real estate, real estate, real estate. So I said, hey, why not? Got into the business, which is a very expensive business to get into. Let me just start by saying that. And I, I ended up spending all my money just trying to get into the business and get going, get, get traction. Well, so um, probably six, seven months in, I ended up getting my first listing. So I actually had a home on the market with the sign in in the yard. Um, and I was doing everything to get that property sold. I mean, any and everything. It was in not such a desirable neighborhood at the time. And so nobody really wanted it. It was, I mean, it wasn't a bad house, but nobody wanted to live over there. It was down to the point where I was holding an open house at that house every Saturday and Sunday, four hours each day, right? Oh. I didn't have anything else to do. Yeah, <laughs> my, only my job, yeah. <laughs> my job was to sell this this house. And, and so I have been doing that for weeks on end. Well, this one morning, um, I was getting ready for my normal routine to go out and hold this house open. I put on my, my oversized suit because it was the only suit that I had. And as I was gathering my things to walk out of the front door, all of my electricity turned off. And, you know, I knew why it turned off. It turned off because I didn't pay the bill and I didn't have any money to pay the bill. But nonetheless, I said, I'm going to go and sell this house. There's nothing I can do about that electricity. It's off. So I got in my um, car with about a quarter tank of gas in there, drove across town to sit in this house all day. Again, I was determined to sell it today. You know, um, first hour went by, nobody came in. Second hour, nobody came in. And just to bring this house into perspective, it was a fairly large but older home, vacant. There wasn't any electricity in the home either. So, you know, I had to just let up all the blinds, the owners, they didn't keep the electricity on because it's been on the market for so long. So it was almost like a replica of, of my situation. But that third hour came and gone. Nobody came in. And halfway through that, through that third hour, I, I remember walking to the door. I said, I know nobody's going to be coming into, into this um, open house. And I remember walking to the, to the door and I locked the door. And literally right there, I fell to my knees and had a full on just breakdown. Wow. Um, I mean, bawling, crying, um, because at that point, I literally felt like I was in the lowest position that I've ever been in in, in my life. Um, I had moved across the country to get into this business. I had told all these people that I was going to be great and be successful. Um, here, I was making it look like I was doing well. But my lights are off at home, barely any gas in the car, has this listing that I'm probably going to get fired from because I can't sell it. And it was literally one of those 
why Lord moments? Like why me? Why, why, why now? Why when I have nothing is this, is this happening to me? And um, at that, I mean, a major turning point at that moment was it was time for me to ask for help. You know, I had to, I had to swallow my pride. I had to get real vulnerable, get, get, get real about everything and, and, and get help. So that was how my career started, which should have been in, in, in going through that would have made most people, most people quit, you know, um, but from there, it was just every day was like, a, I'm gonna give it one more shot today. Yeah, but let me ask you that, Jason, why not just go home, man? What about you, your upbringing, your faith, that you just didn't pack up and go home? Go home back to Georgia or go home to my apartment with my lights off? Georgia, I mean, nothing, it wasn't nothing in Dallas for you, man. You couldn't even pay, you couldn't even pay your bills. I mean, why not just say, you know what, this, this is not the life that I you know, I, I can't do this. Why, why didn't you give up? Yeah, I mean, I I knew that like that wasn't the the end all be all. And, and there was just something pulling at me, you know, not to give up, not to throw in the towel. You know, I always have faith that it's going to work out um, some kind of way. I, I'm, I, I can't see it, tell you how or, or, or what, but I had come so far already. I mean, I was what 23 at the time. I was a kid, literally packed up all of the stuff that I had. And up until that point, I had did everything by myself. You know, I I, I paid for the U-Haul. I drove across the country. I did I did all of these things. And in 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 my head, I felt like I had come so far, you know, and I just didn't want to give up. Like I I just didn't want to give up. I knew that it was going to work out some some kind of way, um, and I knew that at that point that I was at, I couldn't go anywhere but up from from there. I mean, mm. that was all right. So I'm, so you got me on the edge of my seat, man. So like, what was the turning point? I mean, what what began? So you, I love that the mindset of like, and this is one of our core values in our home, man. Is like we never ever give up, and I think like I always talk about our first year of entrepreneurship. I mean, there were multiple times where I thought we were done, like. I, I literally, every lead I had, I, I pitched our product and they said no. And I had literally two months of pay left in the bank. And, uh, and every, and I, I didn't have a big lead list yet. And I remember going to people and pitching this, you know, our product at that time and everyone's saying no. And I'm thinking, oh crap, <laughs> like that's, I don't got anybody left, man. I really don't have anybody left. And exactly like that, laying on the ground thinking we're done. But man, that principle right there, what you just shared, I think if, if most people just refuse to quit, yeah. that is the, that's the key. That's half the battle, maybe more, is I just won't give up and, I'll, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go look for more answers, man. I can't think of a of more true principle in getting started um, if someone's trying to get in, into the game or change your life, like most of the successes are going to come after a, after at least one major trial. And so, man, I, I just, I, I love that, that mindset, that mentality that you have of like, I'm not giving up, man. It, it can only, it can't get worse than this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Plus, I mean, I feel like I was, I was led there, you know, if we want to get deeper in, into my story, I was actually kind of running from Atlanta, mm -hmm. um, running in a sense of what I was doing there. It wasn't productive. I mean, I was I was partying, I was hanging out with all the wrong people, um, you know, battling with depression and anxiety and 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 all kind of stuff. So like I knew I didn't want that anymore, you know. Um, that was a, a different kind of low in in itself, but you know, I was determined. I was determined to be different. I. I felt pulled like you like you asked me a few minutes ago why Dallas I don't know <laughs> like something some something just led me here you know and this is where I plopped up and so you know I knew that all of that was part of the plan part of purpose I just couldn't see the next chapter you know from where I was yeah. but this was all part of it this was all part of the plan yeah I love that man 
So, so what the heck happened? I mean, how did you become the fastest growing real estate team in the country? Woo. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it came with giving value. Um, so as, as I started to, to move through my career, that, that big lesson that I learned that, that day was become vulnerable and ask for help and, and, and everything like that. Well, I, I took it and ran with it on a, a, a public platform. So I hopped on YouTube and I just started sharing my, my journey and my experiences and what I was going through. I wasn't that agent that was on the internet um, with the nice looking headshot, making it all seem all good and stuff. I, I was that person sitting there talking about this was the hardest day ever. Like this guy argued with me about this. And this, like, I was talking about that stuff. And over time I started to build an audience, build a tribe around me, build people who wanted to see me succeed hmm. um, and were rooting for me, you know, sending me that energy. Then fast forward years later, as that grew and grew and grew, then there, there came a, a big portion of my audience who, wanted to roll with me, I guess you can say, you know, and wanted to to be a part of this journey, wanted to... Um, you were still making YouTubes this whole time, YouTube videos. All this, yeah, 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 this whole time. Still, today, I just uploaded one today. Uh, yeah. Hey, yeah. back then, man, when you got started, what, what did your YouTube videos look like? Did you have thumbnails? What, I mean, what, what did you do, man, that, like, to get started on YouTube? Nope. My YouTube videos were horrible from back in the day compared to what they are today. I mean, it was literally me with my phone in the car, camera at not such a good angle. It wasn't like a Kardashian <laughs> selfie angle. It was like horrible, like your grandma's holding it. Audio bad, like literally shaking the whole time. No thumbnail art, no no nothing. I was just using the auto-generated thumbnails from YouTube, um, but I was just putting it out there. like, and And I didn't have a strategy behind it. I was just venting like like that was my outlet instead of me turning to alcohol or going to the clubs and stuff like that like it was like my way of journaling yeah. and i didn't think anybody was going to watch them and and i mean the audience grew on its own i i didn't go out promoting running ads nothing like that um it just kind of happened and so once it did happen and once that audience started growing, that's when I made it more of a responsibility of mine to um, produce content mm -hmm. as I saw how it was helping people. And, um, you know, other people were saying that they didn't give up because of me or they're getting into the business because of me and they're changing their life. Like at that point, it becomes like my moral obligation. You know? Man, second principle, I just, you, bro, you're pulling out gems that I hope people are catching. Share, I talk about all this time, man. Share your story. Share mm -hmm. the journey. Like, document the journey. It doesn't have to be perfect. Get it out there because, like, people want to root for people, man. And, and, you know, it's so much easier to build that when you, when you don't, like, you know, like, there's such a level of trust when you're at the bottom because of, like, well, I just need, this guy needs help. <laughs> yeah. Where when you start doing that at the top, people are like, oh, I don't know if I trust this guy, you know, like he's got it all together where people have seen your journey. And so, man, that's so key, man. I, I love that right there. Yeah. So really, so it started on YouTube. People said, I want to start rolling with you. I mean, dude, let me ask you this then. So today, t t talk to me. I mean, you started getting your first people to kind of start joining your team is that you said hey i'm starting to kind of build this real estate team you you can start putting people underneath you is that and you just kind of one by one is that how it started yeah so it started one by one now it's moving like 14 a week um 14 new new agents a week and having to do some some major changes in infrastructure now i only started this about about a year a year and a half ago um so already over 115 120 agents wow. in um how many 27 states wow so far so yeah it's it's moving real quick so dude coming from a guy who you know was didn't know the real estate game to now leave one of the biggest teams in the country let me ask you this man you you recently just uh went to mexico if i if i, if I know correctly and mm -hmm. got on a boat with 
um, a couple shared mentor, mentors of ours, Grant Cardone, Brandon Dawson. That was the same Mexico trip, right? That mastermind yeah, with those guys. That was the same trip. Yeah. What, what's what's had to? What are you learning now, man? Like from that to who you are now. What what's had to change about you to lead a team like this and to grow a team like this? And what are you learning that you need to do in order to go to the next level? Yeah, one one of the big things that I had to learn was to embrace being a leader. Um, you know, historically in just in, in life, it's like I'm always trying to be buddy buddy or you know, like your pal and 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 just on the same level. But I realized and it took people physically saying it to me that I'm not in that same place that I was you know, and so I need to level up myself and embrace where I am right now, because from a leadership standpoint right now, they're not looking at me because, I'm, I'm, I mean, they're not looking at me as a leader who's having a breakdown on, on, on the ground. They're looking at me to lead them because they see this, you know, mm -hmm. they see how far I've come. They see the business, they see the production all that kind of stuff. And so I, I had to really work on stepping up to the plate and, and, and being that strong leader that people were, were needing. With that, that's, that's come with a lot of responsibility. It's, it's unfortunately affected me in, in a way, well, I don't wanna say unfortunately, but um, something I shared with you was something like a big challenge of mine is being able to let people do their thing, like not, not having to place all the saving responsibility on me. Like I don't have to take care of every single detail because I'm that type of person. Like I want to know what's going on with each and every single person. Like I want right. to know everything, but that physically becoming impossible, you know, and I have to be okay with that. That's, that's another form of being a great leader, you know, being able to trust your, your people, being able to delegate, um, tasks and, and things to people. So yeah. um, that's that's something that I'm that I'm learning. I'm I'm learning how to separate myself more. Hmm. Um, Let me ask you this, Jason. How do you learn that right now? Like how how do you learn those things? Because a lot of the skills that you and I both are having to learn as we grow our businesses, we didn't get taught these things. You know, there's an MBA doesn't even teach you some of these things, right? Mm -hmm. So like how are you learning delegation and leadership and like where do you get these from these skills yeah i mean i think i think the best form of learning for me has been through experience um i love talking to people getting other perspectives see, seeing what's working for them but then i'm i'm also one of those that i experiment with just about everything like i'm not i'm not full on you know delegating a whole bunch to to somebody at first but I'm going to test it out. I'm going to see like, hey, can I give them this? Can I give them that? And, and, and that's how I've done like every hire that I've ever had. Like it's never been a full immersion of it. It's, it's always been them coming to me, asking me for more, like give me more stuff to do, give me this right. and that. Um, and so just things like that happening have shown me that, that like, okay, it's, it's okay. And, and it's taught me lessons. Um, you know, I, I've, I've been trying to do a lot better with my self care, I would say for the last year. And I noticed things that kind of trigger my anxiety. I noticed things that get me eating crazy. I noticed things that have me tired all the time. And when I feel exhausted, and so I've been being better about recognizing that stuff and passing it off, you know, because there are certain things that I enjoy doing that I can do all day and night. And there's other things that have to be done, but I can't stand it. They stress me out that somebody's really good at and they thrive in that environment. So, you know, it's, it's just made all of us even a lot happier with me doing stuff like that. And like, those were all things that I never, I didn't link the two up, but as you see them happening through this, this experimenting, it feels good and it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Dude, for you now, so I, I, I just love this story, man. Like, you know, 
it's just so amazing what you can accomplish if you don't give up, man. You surround yourself around the right people. So today, you know, you're a year and a half into this, you're growing like crazy. What are, like, what is the most important role or activity that you focus on on a day-to-day or week-to-week basis? Like, what are the key activities that are most important to the growth of you and your company that you do, right? That that you focus on in a, uh, on a consistent basis. Sure. So um, one of my big activities is, well, just overall running the business. So so making sure that everybody has their responsibilities, knows what needs to get, get done. Um, I went from meeting every day with all of the um, staff to, to now only meeting maybe like once or twice a week, which, which we're at that place now. Um, and then on, on the flip side, like my day job now is to really put out value. Um, I have to put out value in so many different places now. You know, it's, it's not just a YouTube channel for me any, anymore. I have a whole coaching company. I have all these agents across the country. I have um, some other businesses that we've been working on. So it's like I have to make all of these deposits throughout the day, throughout the week. Um, I have a podcast myself, plus my YouTube channel. So um, everything for me during the day stems around making those deposits, um, spreading that value. I've gotten to the point where I've hired managers, you know, so they can handle a lot of the, um, you know, bigger, bigger things that I used to handle. And now I can just really focus on what the world wants from me, you know, um, to hear my voice, see my face. All that. It's cool that content creation is a key for you, right? I'm, I'm so like when you say adding value, I mean getting in front of the camera, speaking, recording. That's a that's a high value piece for you. Yeah, yeah, it's not secondary at all. Yeah. Um, you know, I I talk to a lot of people, and I can see for a, a a good number of people out there that it's one of those secondary things where it's like if I get to it, I get to it, or I don't right. know how to do it. But for me. If, if I know that I haven't gotten out a video in, you know, a certain amount of time, I can't sleep at night. I, I whip something together like it's, it's bad because it's, it's part of my business. Right. I literally can link it to income. I can link it to growth. So when it's that type of deal, it's, it's not just the if I get to it in or I'll try it later. No, like it's part of my job. So can we nerd out a little bit on YouTube together for a few minutes, man? Sure. Because I, I'm starting to grow. I'm starting. I, I it's finally the light bulb has finally come on for me, man. Like yeah. YouTube is still the platform for mm. the next long, as far as I can see it. Yeah. Um, and you, you're crushing it, dude. You just have an amazing channel, and your videos are amazing. Talk to me about what like overall strategy right now on YouTube what's changed since you've been using it what do you what do you see that really is in terms of i mean let's be honest it is a platform for you to get your name your brand you know grow your awareness that's why we're doing any of these things Mm -hmm. um what is your is there a strategy that you have right now on youtube yeah i mean i wouldn't necessarily call it a strategy but um a big thing for me is working with the algorithms okay um and and the the algorithms have changed over the years you know before it was just about subscribers like how many subscribers you had then it became about watch time then it became about like binge watching now it's more focused on the like button so getting people to hit that like button will take you a lot further um on on youtube now um working with the algorithms in the sense of it's not like, even though I have a large following, I have over three and a half, four million views on YouTube. I still can't just always, oh, well, I'm gonna record a video showing all the clothes in my closet because people are gonna watch that and be interested in that. No, it, 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 it doesn't even work like that. Like you have to really work with these algorithms. What are people searching for? You know, like looking on Google, see if seeing if search terms pop up, okay, when you, our title and videos work with those keywords. Like I still do it today, work with the keywords. I always have keywords in my video, in my description. Where do you find, what, what, what's your process of titling your videos? How do you like, let's say we, you're gonna use this interview as a video on YouTube. What, what would be the process of titling that, 
creating the thumbnail for you to, to, to make sure it's, it's worth putting on your page? Sure. So for, for titles, I go two places. I'll give you the simple way and then the other way. So the, the very simple way, I open up a private browser and then I go to Google and I start typing in um, kind of what this video is, is about, you know, or just one of the topics that we talked about. And I'm going to see if anything else populates under that, okay? If it does, I may start typing in more stuff. Like I want the title to be narrow enough to where it reaches a certain audience and I don't want it too broad to where it's like, oh, 50 million people are searching for this. No, give me like 1 million, 2 million. Um, I like that because it gets, it gets more views. Then that'll reach the 50 million. Um, another one, Another thing that I do, if this is before I recorded a video and I'm looking for like a topic or something, I go to this, this website, it's called answerthepublic.com. And I'll type in a keyword that I use on my channel a lot, which for my channel, a keyword is real estate agents. So if I go to answerthepublic.com and type in real estate agents, it's going to show me all of the questions that people are searching for with that keyword. It's going to show me what people are typing into search engines. I mean, it gives you hundreds of different options and it gives you the volume. So that's where I'll go if I'll need a topic to, to talk about. I'll also remake popular videos. So I have videos that are popular that I've uploaded four years ago. I, I'll, I'll remake them. I mean, I I'm looking at, I'm, I'm looking, I want to know this right now, man. So we're going to yeah. go live on YouTube. Okay. So answer the public.com. I'm here right now. Yep. And then, so you're saying I would just type in right here, real estate yep. investors. Yep. Type in real estate investors right there. So this is a great promotion for my YouTube channel right now. Uh, Jason is like, if people want to see what we're doing, go to the YouTube channel so they can actually see this, get off the podcast and go to YouTube, Kingdom REI YouTube channel. See how I did that right there? Always yeah. promote. Okay. So then this wheel you're saying is just questions that I can look at. Yeah. And, and if you scroll up a little bit, cause that wheel is hard to read. If you click on data right up top, um, not, not a, yeah. Right next to visualization to the left, you'll see where it says data. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that'll put it in like a normal form. So, so yeah, these are all questions that people are asking, I mean, in extremely relevant, you see are real estate investors eligible for PPP? You know, that's, that's something that gets searched heavily. Wow. And, and this is literally your title of your video. That's it's, good. It's so how much, good. so what can real estate investors write off? How can much can real estate investors make? Uh, that's good, man. Are real estate investors rich? This is so. This is so. You're saying then you would just take this, and these could be these could be titles, yeah, topics, because I mean, this is what people are already searching for. They're already searching for it. Yeah, that's great stuff, man. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, in terms of editing, dude. So, what's your what's your tips for making you know quality videos, but don't spending a lot of time? Do you do you hire out the editing process? So I actually have someone on staff who, who does my, my editing now. Um, before I was doing all of my editing, then I tried like going the freelancer route where I was using Fiverr and, and Upwork. And I just felt like I was spending more time giving instructions than me just go ahead and editing it myself. But I was never doing crazy edits and stuff like that. I was just using iMovie. It was free on the Mac. Um, I was just doing simple cuts in there. I didn't really like watching my videos because I knew that I was going to critique them a lot. So yeah. I would basically only edit out the beginning and the end when like I'm <laughs> messing with the camera and stuff. And then, yeah, upload it. Um, then I went to using Canva for the thumbnails, just simple thumbnails. I mean, you'll notice that my thumbnails are not complicated. They're, they're, they're real basic. Um, with the, the thumbnails, the thing about that is you want something like attention grabbing on that thumbnail. Sometimes people, they don't even read the title. So your thumbnail is kind of all you have to, to get them in. Um, so your so, in-house video editor. So you got someone in-house and meaning in person and they're on salary and their role is to edit content. Yep. Yep. He's actually sitting 
right here um, filming this from another camera. <laughs> hey, I love that, man. Yeah. That's awesome. He'll use this. He'll chop up little things that you can use and you'll redistribute this on what other platforms? Yeah, so um, IGTV, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, my mailing list. Sometimes we will chop little bitty pieces up, put them on YouTube. So, um, so yeah, let's talk. So this is so good, man. So you're telling me you'll take this, you'll take this video and, and I, because a lot of people, I don't think realize how many things you can make as content. So we're on a podcast right now. I'm recording you. I mean, you got one of your guys recording you on a camera right now yep. as you talk. Yep. And then his job is to take this episode and chop it up, find the little pieces of you talking one minute, three minute, 10 minute, 15 minute clips. Right. Mm -hmm. And then what, what we're all like, so you're saying you'll just take those and put those across all of your different channels. Yeah. And, and I mean, we spread them out over time, but, but that's essentially what it is. Our, our videos that, that we chop up no longer than what, like a minute, minute and five seconds. So they're really short micro content pieces. Mm -hmm. And, um, we're not necessarily even leading them to, to another place. Like I'm not like putting this out saying go here on YouTube to watch the full thing. But it's like, if, if there's a good thought that we want to share or a good question, that's what we'll put on Instagram or, or we'll put that on LinkedIn, Facebook. Yeah. Um, yeah so we're sitting here for, for what, 30 minutes and an hour. There's so much content in, in just one of these conversations and the big thing is it doesn't have to all go out today, tomorrow. You know, if, if you can make 15, 20 different pieces from just this one episode, I mean, that can last you a long time. Like we have a full on library stuff now, you know? You know, I think for a lot of people though, that, that's an investment, like, because an investment, like hiring that guy, for example, maybe for you, you had a YouTube channel that's already creating revenue for you. There, there's a clear profit center there, but for a lot of people, that's it doesn't exist yet, right? Like the content piece is not going to necessarily turn into direct revenue. So, I mean, that mindset for you, or if you're speaking to someone else, a guy like me who's trying to grow his brand or his business, what is that investment worth? I mean, is that a good investment to hire someone, you know, to say, hey, I'm going to bring in someone like that to do this? Do you think that's a good investment for? for young real estate agents or young real estate investors trying to grow their business or their brand to, to get started and create content, maybe even invest the money into building a team like that to help you create more content. Let me say this about that. As of right now, where I am in business, it's a good investment for me because my time is very limited and I do have the financial resources to make that investment. Back then when I was starting out, I had all the time in the world. I didn't have a lot of business, okay? But I didn't have any money. I didn't have a lot of money. So the investment that I can make at that time was my time, mm. okay? I could sit there, I can edit those videos, I can learn, I can figure it out. And I was comfortable with that. You know, you can't jump from zero to, to 60 just, you know, like that, well, I couldn't. So I had to edit my own stuff for as long as I had to until it got in. And, and when I say as long as I had to, it was years. It wasn't like one year later. It was many years later, um, you know, to where I was able to do that. And even his, his role now, it's not just filming and editing videos. You know, we, we make it worth it, um, but it took time to get there. And so my biggest advice to people, yeah, it may seem cool to have an editor or, you know, easier, but if you're not at that place yet, right. use what you do have, right. you know, there's tons of apps out there now, like tons of apps. And I'm going to tell you this, even today, even today, we still use a free video editor to edit all of my videos. Nothing paid. What's it called? iMovie. Aha. <laughs> iMovie. I love it, man. I free love video it. editor. We have free it. stock music in, in my videos. Like, it's, it's, it's that thing, like, don't pay for it if you can't right now, because there are tons of ways that you can do it for free um, to get it going. Yeah, that's so good. Man, this is, dude, this has been, a, you know what this has been, man? This has been a master class on 
going from hustle to mastery. Like, mm. honestly, man, I mean, this is what this is like from hustle to, 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 to mastery, because that's what you've done, man. You took a passion and you turned it into a business and, and you've really taken the time to invest in yourself and your team and you're building something world class, man. I am curious what Brandon Dawson or Grant Cardone told you over the over that two day mastermind. What was the advice you got from those guys? Man, let me get give me give me get my little foot. No, I mean, and that and that Grant was uh that was that was my first time like even I mean I never like I listened to him, I know who he is, but that was my first time like seeing him live in in in, in action. Um one one big thing he said was don't blink. And that was so deep because it's just like the pace that things are are moving at, you know, there's there's literally no time to to just sit on something anymore. Like why not? Because by the time you blink, an opportunity has come and gone. You yeah. know, don't overthink things. Just just act on, on the fly, like 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 go with that intuition. Like if God is telling you to do something, just do it. Yeah. You know, you may not be able to, to see what's going to happen from it, but just do it. Um, but yeah, literally a whole book here of, of notes that I took. Um, but that but that don't don't blink. That's Two good. Little simple words. It's just, you know, it's so many things that we overanalyze. I mean, and I don't want to say overanalyze in, in like a bad way, but we're constantly analyzing, we're constantly trying to learn, we're, we're constantly trying to, you know, do all of these things outside of the action, you know, outside of just moving towards something, like letting, and, and then next thing you know, you blink, somebody else either came up with that invention, I mean, invention, or the opportunity is gone for you, or, you know, you're even further than where you, where you started, and so, yeah. Yeah, wow. Dude, I've enjoyed the heck out of this conversation, man. So what's your YouTube channel called? How can people find you? We've been talking about a lot about YouTube. Where do they go to, uh, what's the best place, man, to follow your content? Yeah, sure. Um, you can always go to my website, chastonjmiles.com. All my links are there. Um, and that's C-H-A-S-T-I-N, the letter J, M-I-L-E-S. Um, if you search me on any network, you'll, you'll find me with just that, that username. Um, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, but Dude, so what's web... next, man? What's next? So you, I mean, what were you heading? Yeah. So, um, I am in the process of releasing a, my first software, which is awesome. I'm excited about it. Um, I have some, some business partners I've also been working with. We've been working on a mortgage company and, um, title company. And so, wow just just really building the um building the the business side but i'm excited to start launching some masterminds and you know, get there again and meet people i love it so yeah that's what's next well man i'm excited to share a couple of rooms with you in the future i know we're going to try and get together on some stuff so uh man this has been fun um bro i just i wish so many amazing blessings and and uh, to what you're doing, man, there in Dallas. And thanks for sharing your time with our audience, man. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Guys, if you've enjoyed this as much as I have, I just encourage you, man, take a screenshot of this episode and go share this on social media, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. Tag us, Chase and Jay and Miles, at Ellis Hammond. Let us know what you took away from this show. Uh, it goes a, such a long ways to help share our message. If you, if you sat here for the last 45 minutes and got anything, all I'm asking is just go share this content. Go let somebody else know what you took away from this. Um, if you're going to go take away one thing that's going to help you take your business to the next level in the next week or month or year, just go share this with somebody else. We really appreciate that, man. I love doing this. Can't wait to keep doing this and creating great content for you guys. We'll see you next week. Cheers. Cheers.